how much does it or doesn't it matter who's that quarterback for Kate? You know, honestly, we, we haven't talked about it that much. I know it seems hard to believe, uh, but I, I think uh, whoever it is, we just gotta we gotta play our game and our style and do and do our our thing and execute all our calls. Um, I think uh, very similar skill sets, no matter who plays. You know, watching Ballard last week, um, seemed like he was very athletic. Um, didn't seem to panic when he had a bunch of pressure. You know, threw a good ball. Uh, was able to run their offense. They didn't seem to to dumb anything down for him. Um, so I, I don't think it uh, is going to affect us one way or another. Snap stuff they do. How difficult is that to make sure you're lined up? That's right? the biggest thing. Yeah, they do a really good job with that, and they orchestrate it well. They do it with uh, with a lot of tempo uh, too. Uh, so it's it's kind of the way to get no huddle without being no huddle. You know, because they're going to make you get aligned at the last second and, and get your eyes right and play. And that's been the emphasis for us. Is and I think if we can do that, we'll have a chance to succeed. But we've got to uh, got to get dialed into to those pre-snap shifts for sure. Kind of struck me as odd last game that first drive, the other comes out. Does pretty much everything they want to you guys, but then the rest of the game it's all Kansas State. Yeah. What what kind of changed there defensively? Well, um, I don't know. We we had a couple of uh, uh, there was a call that I wish I had back. Uh, we had a couple of technique errors. It was just kind of a, a, a Murphy's Law, I think, that first series last week. Um, you know, a, a step or, or a, a, a some, you know little things that that thing could have went much differently early too and. Uh, Kind of the worst case scenario for us to start the game like that, giving a team life that uh, that needed it. Um, but then, you know, Cody Stuffel being in Des Pernell in that next series, that was huge for us to get our, our, our feet back underneath us and, and get going. Yeah, it was just uh, um, probably some things I wish I had done differently there. And, um, you know, just that wasn't our finest moment. Speaking of Cody, did you see a game like that coming from him? He's just old Mr. Reliable. You know, I, I, was, I was telling somebody earlier a joke about this. Um, you know, he and I, he's just the, doesn't wear gloves. He doesn't tape his, you know, he's just different than a lot of guys. And he's just a, he's funny like that. And he just has this remarkable ability to remain calm. Like when everything around is frantic, he's just calm, you know, and, and he and I kind of joke about that. I think it was about five or six weeks ago, uh, some kind of thing was going on. It was, it was, uh, real intense. And I grabbed him because he was just standing next to me. And I go, you know what, stuff? Sometimes it's hard to be smart and good looking at the same time. And then after, you know, the the fumble uh, or the you know the sack the other day, uh, everybody's dancing around with him and stuff. And he kind of he came up to me and he goes, you know what? It is hard to be smart and good looking at the same time. <laughs> so it's just kind of a funny. That's just the kind of kid he is. I just really appreciate all the work he's done for us. Has the secondary really settled into? rhythm of flow and uh, you know, what their roles are yeah, for each position? Yeah, I, I you know, I, I feel like, um, you know, Kobe and VJ for sure, the more pictures that those guys can get at their respective positions, I think that's helped them a lot. Uh, there was a couple of weeks there, and I think sometimes it's my own fault because, you know, we take for granted some of our base things and we, you know, emphasize maybe some more of the exotic things when those guys needed those base down reps to get comfortable in their new positions when we flip those guys around. So those guys have been uh, rock stars. And then I think the other part of it is uh, Will Lee and Keenan Garber, you know, have really settled in. And uh, I don't want to say they were wild cards early in the year, but I think they were still kind of learning how to, you know, the flow of the game and some of that. And just seeing their confidence um, on the field is, is a big deal. Uh, those guys have, have solidified us for sure. Do you feel like you almost have four cover corners out at the, on the field at any one time? We, including Marquise, is that what you're saying? Sure. Yeah, you bet. I, I think uh, um, I think those guys can play man against anybody in the country. And, and I think that uh, we, we thought that for a long time. I think the, the big thing is, you know, can they do some of the other things? And, and that's where they're improving right now is they're, they're being, you know, when we use them in the run fit, when we send them on a blitz, when we do these different things with them, um, they're getting so much more comfortable in those roles. Did want to keep Cooper BB in on red zone defense? Man, he was, all I know, we were giving our guys a little grief. He was the only one that was getting any knockback on that play in there. Um, yeah, it, just how square he stayed and how his feet moved, it was just uh, – that was kind of cool. I wish uh, – I don't know if Coach Klein would be too fired up about that, but, uh, yeah, we'd love to use him. Kind of going back to the quarterback thing, this offense has a lot of window dressing. They do throw the ball effectively, but – at the end of the day, it's about two really good running backs and an offensive line that's at the tempo. And yeah, and, and, and a veteran offensive line that's seen a lot of pictures and, and two tailbacks that can really get downhill on you. I mean, these kids are, are physical, physical runners, um, both of them, and, and similar style-wise, I think. Um, yeah, they're, they're sneaky, you know, 
personnel-wise, uh, they, they've, they've got tight ends that make plays, you know, uh, probably aren't the, the flashiest guys, but they, you know, find ways to get open. They catch balls in traffic. They, you know, they're, um, you know, really uh, spearheading all the shift trade motion stuff. Uh, and then they've got receivers that have length and can run and have great ball skills and um, just, a, you know, think very highly of the personnel that they have. And you're right, I think uh, the, the quarterback um, – Mobility factor makes all that stuff even even enhanced um, and, and more scary. What advice did you have for Khalid after he was uh, ejected the other day? You know, I didn't see him until the following day, honestly. Um, and uh, you know, I talked to him uh, this week a little bit. He he, he he's <laughs> Khalid has matured so much, and and that's so uncharacteristic of him. I just think he was uh, uh, caught in the moment a little bit, and and. Uh, I didn't even really see what started it or, or how it ended, to be honest with you. Um, you know, and, and it is unfortunate because uh, he's been such a good leader for us, and, uh, and he, he's fine. He, he, he's he's back. Uh, he just kind of um, got wrapped up in it. I don't think he was starting. I think he was trying to walk away from it. Um, and uh, by all accounts, that's what I've heard, and kind of got wrapped up in it. And you know, once you're in it, it was it was it was on, so to say. How do you feel about your situation and Mike having lost Jake Clifton? Yeah, that was, uh, I, I, you know, shout out to Jake. You know, we've talked about Jake in here multiple weeks. Just a, I mean, they don't come any better than him uh, as far as a person and a player and a guy that you want representing your program. And I, I feel awful about that. Um, but I feel very good about uh, Austin Romaine. You know, he's started games for us. Um, you know, Austin's kind of trip this year is, he was a guy that uh, we thought could help us. We thought that in fall camp and um, didn't think we were going to have to when we had Daniel Green. And then, uh, you know, when Daniel's situation went down, Austin all of a sudden got thrust into a, into a role where he was part of the rotation. And, um, and at that, we were able to, you know, spell him and keep him kind of grounded. And um, obviously now with the loss of Jake, he's going to have to have an even greater role in what we do. And we feel confident that he's, he can run the show in there for us and physically he's – as good as anybody we have, and um, I'm excited for him to get his opportunity. How do you prepare for an offense that doesn't necessarily run gadget plays, but a, a bunch of abnormal stuff? You're going to get a wildcat, a reverse, you know, a double pass, something like that. Yeah, and, and, the, and the tricky thing is that uh, that you can't – they're not going to do the same things twice. You know, it's not like the, something they did last week, you're going to get it right. And that's not, that's not the MO uh, of anybody nowadays, but um, – I think it's just us emphasizing our rules and principles again and going back to our fundamentals and our rules and principles. At the end of the day, those are the things that are going to win the game for us is uh, us being sound and, and um, me trying to get the numbers where the numbers need to be and, and then uh, those guys going out there and playing as fast as they can. I read a stat earlier today, 13 takeaways in the last five games, number one among Power Five teams I just was curious uh what's what's working so well for you on takeaway man I don't know uh you know we were emphasizing it just as much when we were getting none you know and we were we were morons for not being able to get any and and uh um I, I do think uh you know I, I, have a, I have a theory you know we, we've played a little bit more zone coverage and I, I do think that uh when you have a little bit more eyes on the ball sometimes that lends itself to to more uh, interceptions as opposed to you know, when you're playing man and, and most people have their backs turned to the ball. Uh, that's maybe part of it. The other part of it is I do think our guys are getting a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more experienced. And, and when they get to the point of attack, they get there with a little bit better body control. And I think that's probably got something to do with it too. Uh, but as far as us hammering at home every day, that doesn't change since August 1st. You know, that we've always been saying that. And it's just sometimes they come in bunches and I hope they keep coming.